Wisdom reaction time on Dundapani. Interesting. I don't know if I agree already. That's uh. When people say to me, life is interesting perspective. And I only have practice yeah, where into our everyday life. Have slightly different views. I'll Look explain at more opportunity after. That is that we become so true. Good. And whatever it is we practice, whether it's positive very or negative, true, very it true. doesn't matter. Be the how change that you want to see in the world, as Gandhi says. So that's where I would slightly disagree with, I guess, what Dandapani was saying. Supposedly he's enlightened, whatever that means. Um, he, for Sadhguru's kind of stuff, makes a bit more sense to me. Present practice. What's conscious? This is Vish. And today, I'll be responding to Dandapani's video on how to control your mind. My name is Vish, and I'm an aspiring yogi. Love all things meditation, yoga, and wisdom based. And today, I'm super grateful to have you watching. And a quick reminder before you continue if you haven't hit that subscribe button or that like button yet, please do that now. So, Dandapani, it's a word I've heard quite often, and uh, don't know who he is. If you know who he is, or let's just say have any other video re reaction requests about Dandapani, you can comment down below. But yeah, I don't really know much about him. I'm not sure what to even say about him because I just don't know him. Uh, but I've heard the word quite a bit and super curious to see what he has to say. And before we start again, don't forget to comment down below uh, any other video reactions that you want me to do about Dandapani or just topics in general or other people you want me to react to. And with that, let's get into the video. So the first thing I learned when I went to the monastery was to learn how the mind works. Because once you know how the mind works, you can control it. And once you can control it, you can focus it. You can't focus or concentrate something you don't understand. Interesting. I don't know if I agree already. That's uh... When people say to me, life is too busy, I can't simplify. No, it's you don't want to. You have the choice. Nobody's holding a gun to your head saying, you have to associate with these people, you have to do these things. No, you, you choose to do them. People say this to me all the time, you know, I hang around with entrepreneurs and other people that you and I have met. They've come up with Snapchat. You need to be on Snapchat. I'm like, I don't need to be on Snapchat. I don't care what comes up tomorrow, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. Because I can't sustain it, right? That's gonna take a little bit more of my energy each day. Interesting perspective. And I only have this much energy and I need to divide it between all the people and things that I love. Right, law of thermodynamic states, you cannot create or destroy energy, but you can transfer it from one thing to another or transform it from one thing to another. So I can't create more energy, I only have this much. Because come 11 o'clock tonight, I'll be exhausted and ready to sleep. True. So I got this much, 100%. You can't create or destroy, I agree with that. I always tell entrepreneurs to look at energy the same way they look at money. It's a finite resource that needs to be wisely managed, wisely reallocated, and wisely invested. The average person sleeps about seven to eight hours to say, roughly, so we're awake for about 16 hours of the day. Let's just say on average we're practicing it 13 hours a day, seven days a week distraction. And then you wonder why you're so good at it. That's the law of practice. The law of practice that is, is that we become so true. good. And whatever it is we practice, whether it's positive very or negative, true, it true. doesn't matter. If you practice something over and over and over again, you become really good at it. And that's why people are so good at distraction, because it's what they practice. And Unconscious then say that things is, like but yes. Technology are great distractors, right? Hmm. Smartphones. Oh, I have this thing so distracting my smartphone. The internet. Are they distractors? I'd like to say no first, and then yes, but mostly no. Technology in itself is not a bad thing. It's actually a beautiful thing. As yes. long as we're in charge of it. Yes. But if every yes. time your iPhone beeps or makes a sound and you turn to it and you go, yes, master, <laughs> yes. how can I serve you today? Very true. Then you live in that world of distraction. You, it's training you I love this so far, seriously. But if you actually use technology, then technology is not a bad thing. So how do we become good at concentrating? We start by understanding the mind, right? All of us have a mind. It's the most powerful tool in the world, built a smart. Before we continue any further, I, I really do love what he's saying. And although I had that initial, maybe slight disagreement, which I'll expand on later, which I think he's talking about now, but with this whole idea of technology on whether it's good or bad, honestly, he's right. It's not good or bad. And that's what I've learned from Sadhguru or Eckhart Tolle, other spiritual teachers as well, uh, or Sadhguru is a guru, but it's, 
about essentially whether the technology is using you or are using the technology. And especially with how, you know, I guess it's been programmed and uh, designed now where it's all about getting your attention and it, it has led to short attention spans, especially with things like TikTok and, and so on. Uh, I would agree that we are more distracted than ever before. Uh, but then again, a beautiful line this, this guy said, Dandapani, which was on essentially how uh, if you pr keep practicing anything, right? That makes sense. Anything you practice, you'll get good at. And I think most of us are practicing getting distracted. So that makes perfect sense. I mean, it's super simple. I love this so far and super curious about what he has to say with the mind because initially I wasn't too sure. Uh, but let's see what he has to say and uh, we'll get back into it. Phone, it's for machines that drive itself on Mars. So the first thing I learned when I went to the monastery was to learn how the mind works. Because once you know how the mind works, you can control it. And once you can control it, you can focus it. You can't focus or concentrate something you don't understand. So how does the mind work? From the monk's perspective, from the monk's experience of the mind, there's th two things that you need to understand. One is there's awareness and one is the mind. So I'll take a few moments to explain this to you and share what they are. So imagine awareness as a glowing ball of light, like an orb that can float around. Okay, so that's awareness. Now imagine your mind as a vast space, vast area with many different sections within it. One area of the mind is anger, jealousy, food, sex, happiness, joy, signs, art. And this glowing ball of light called awareness can travel within the mind and it can go to any area of the mind it wants to go to. And when it goes to a particular area of the mind, it lights up that area. When it lights up that area of the mind, you become conscious of it. And this is what happens all day. We allow people this is and super things simple, around us actually. to take awareness to from one sense. area of the mind to another all day long. From the time we wake up. And therefore, we become distracted. So to be concentrated is to be able to keep your awareness on one thing for an extended period of time. How do we practice this? We practice this by doing one thing at a time throughout the day. What's the best way to develop concentration? The best way to develop concentration is to bring that yeah, practice this into our everyday life. Have slightly different views. I'll Look explain at more opportunities after. throughout your day. In your average day, ask yourself, what's a great opportunity to practice concentration? How many of you have a spouse or partner that you live with? Quite a few of you. Every time you speak with your spouse or your partner, keep that ball of light, that awareness on that person. It drifts away, bring it back. It drifts away, bring it back. The more you practice this, the more you become better at concentration. Give her or him your undivided attention. So if you speak to your spouse for two hours a day, what a great opportunity to practice concentration. Every time you speak with your child, practice concentration. Parents come up to me all the time and say, Dandapani, how can I teach my children to concentrate? Very easy. You learn to concentrate first. Yes. You know, there's an old saying that goes, monkey sees, monkey do. You know? I love the parent part. if you can't part. concentrate, you can't expect your child to concentrate. Yes. And if you don't teach your children how to concentrate, Be the change that you want to see in the world, as Gandhi says. how to concentrate. They can't. The benefits of concentration are endless, right? When you're able to concentrate, you're able to focus all your energy into a single given point. Life is a manifestation of where your energy is flowing. And if you can't concentrate your energy, the things that you want to manifest in your life becomes very, very challenging. So learn to concentrate by doing one thing at a time. Bring this practice into everything that you do throughout the day. Make it a part of your life. Practice, practice, practice keep bringing awareness back and keep it focused on one thing at a time. Alrighty, let's talk about it. So, a beautiful video. Really impressed by Dandapani's ability to speak uh, so clearly, um, very much to the point. Uh, now, I will be using Sudguru as a reference because I'm sure as you all know, especially those of you all that watch Sudguru uh, or my videos, you've seen I've done quite a few videos on him. So I'm going to compare just out of a sense of getting a better understanding about what I've understood and hopefully that makes sense. Not to say Dandapani is better or Sadhguru is better, not the point here. So again, a little preface there. Basically, 
Yeah, love the way he talks, and it's very clear. Obviously, his English is great. I'm guessing he grew up in either some sort of western part of the world. I think I'm guessing England or some place like that. Uh, so really love the way he speaks and uh, keeps it simple. I, I really did connect with that quite a bit. Uh, maybe just at a slight small comparison. I didn't feel though as captivated uh, or as you know just I don't know. Yeah, either captivated or just. The energy wasn't there that I've, I've gone from Sadhguru, right? Where you don't need any background music, you're just zoned in. Uh, whereas I think the background music, the background music to uh, Dandapani helped quite a bit, so it made it serious, dramatic, and so on. Anyways, just small side cont contextual things. But with that being said, I really want to first start by talking about the things I loved, and then maybe towards the end I'll get into, not maybe, I will definitely get into what I didn't vie with as much. So the first part is the key word of practice, right? Practice, practice, practice. I agree, I couldn't agree less. No matter what it is, whether it's your meditations, your sadhana, uh, your work, everything requires practice. Now the key is, is your practice conscious or unconscious? And especially if it's unconscious practicing, that's what, you know, the un that's what the mindless social media scrolling is and just YouTube watching, whatever it might be. Hopefully these videos that you're watching aren't, uh, let's call it sucky energy out of you, but it's giving you some wisdom, which is kind of the point I'm making here uh, with this stuff. But yeah, no, I, I really love that word. Practice is the key. And then people wonder and question, right, as he says, how? How, are, how am I so good at getting distracted and like it's just so easy? Well, if you train yourself to do that all the time, what do you expect? So, super simple words, very powerful though. With that being said though, the question of controlling the mind, you see, that's a perspective that Sadhguru has a slightly different view on, which is, do you want your mind to be controlled or to be free? What are your thoughts? Comment down below. Also, if you've made it this far, we we'll definitely appreciate you hitting that subscribe button as well as the like button, so I can keep making these videos just for y'all. I would say definitely I want the mind to be free and as I've learned just through my own experiences with the mind, I'm no expert here, right? I'm no mind expert, but I do have a mind and we all pretty much do. I've learned, and again, this is where Sadhguru's kind of stuff makes a bit more sense to me. The nature of the mind is not to be controlled. You don't want to put a cage and like just with this whole one dimensional focus on this, concentrate on this. You can try practicing that in terms of like having that flow. But I think an even better approach is, as Sadhguru says, give your all to everything that you do. So whether it's doing one thing or doing 10 things, give your all to everything, right? Because sometimes the nature of your life and the nature of your work uh, could demand for more than, you know, you doing one thing. And so it might require you to do two things, three things. In those situations, you won't have the luxury to do this one concentration thing, right? And surprisingly, Sadhguru himself has talked about how he actually, again, supposedly he's enlightened, whatever that means. Um, he's able to multitask, like do 15 things at once, which I'm not gonna say is true, I'm not gonna say it's not true, but if he's there and he's doing that, I think it's something we all could do too, eventually. So taking this whole one approach, concentrate on one thing at a time, I don't know if that's the optimal way to go, right? Again, just a, a perspective here. And then going, going back to how the mind should be controlled or should it be free, again, I really do connect with the mind being free because again, as I've learned from the nature of the mind, the moment you put that cage or the moment you try stopping thoughts, you really can't do that. It's just not the nature. If I say don't think of a big red car right now, uh, a big red BMW, you're going to think of the big, re BM, <laughs> big red BMW. If you've thought of that, comment down below as I just said that. I would love to hear if this is true or not. But it's a very simple psychological experiment you can try on your own. And that's just the nature of the mind. So more than being controlled, as I've learned from the Sadhguru path, you can create distance from the mind. When you create distance from the mind, you're basically not as affected by the mind and not as consumed. You're not entangled by the mind. So that's where I would slightly disagree with, I guess, what Dandapani was saying. But again, that's the perspective I've had and this is the interpretation. So always open for uh, you know, areas to improve my understanding or just improve my areas of what I've grasped and connected with. But yeah, again, overall, I, I definitely might wanna watch more of his videos. I love the simplicity as well as 
how easy it was to connect with what he was saying. Uh, and if you have any other videos by Dandapani that you want me to watch and react to, you can also comment down below. If you have any other videos or just other spiritual teachers or gurus, or just any video, I mean, wisdom literally encompasses everything. I just do wisdom reactions. Comment those all down below. With that, I want to thank you so much for watching, taking this time, super grateful for you. And make a great day, take it joyfully, and stay conscious. Ecstasy.